Welcome back to the channel. This video is on hydrology and we're looking at what a hydrograph is and how we can use this hydrograph to estimate the flow of water through or over a river system and a drainage basin and a watershed and a catchment area and also to estimate the effect of high precip in terms of flooding for a particular river. This is the Earth Science Classroom. To create a hydrograph for a river, you need to collect data from that river to then show in the hydrograph. The data is the height of the river, which is how much water is flowing through the river channel at one time, which is also discharge. And that is calculated by placing a stream gauge, a very basic measurement of the height of the river, the water in the channel using numbered increments. And you could see the fluctuations during different times of the year, dry season, wet season, different climates, different parts of the river, but you get this average height of how much water is in the channel. And then you can also calculate the velocity, the flow of the water using the flow meter or a very basic float, which is being moved by the river between two poles, usually 10 meters apart. And you calculate the speed of the float and distance to give meters per second in terms of velocity. And then once you have that data, you can then calculate and create a hydrograph. The river's height or the amount of water is the discharge through a certain point in the river. And this discharge is calculated by estimating the average channel width at that certain point and the average channel depth. Now this can be used or calculated in subsections and you add up those subsections or those divisions to create the large channel, the entire channel, and then have an average, or you can just basically take one section, the deepest part, and call that the average. Again, you can be more detailed or less detailed, depends on the river, the size, and how much time you have to collect this information, how detailed you need to be. But it's giving you a amount of water flowing through in cubic meters per second, or cumex. And this is the discharge that will change the height of the river, which will then be indicated or shown on the hydrograph. Here we have a hydrograph. The hydrograph is set up with three axes. The horizontal x-axis is time, and the two vertical axes on the left, the y-axis is rainfall in millimeters, and on the right is river height in meters, which also corresponds to the discharge of that river at that point in the river's course, which is measured in cumex, which is cubic meters per second. Now this blue line is the discharge, is the river height. And the blue bars on the left signify or show the increased amount of precip over a certain time, which corresponds to the storm event or the high precip amount, which is gonna fall into that particular watershed, that catchment area, that drainage basin, and make its way into the river through various ways or various sources. Now the sources are shown on this hydrograph. The first part of the hydrograph we have discussed is the base flow. This is the more consistent flow of water from the ground water source into the river and it provides this day-to-day -day average flow of water through the river channel and this is what you see as a general amount of water flowing down the river which is base flow and this does not correspond to any storm events or large precip but the average precip in that location that falls as initially meteoric water on the watershed and then flows into the groundwater and flows into the river again based on the water table based on climate but that's the average baseline amount of water the consistent and constant flow of water into the river channel creating this base flow now with the hydrograph you see this added section of water the addition of more water more discharge more of a height shown by the increase in this blue line going above the base flow as a consequence or result of the added water that's been added into the system, the river network, from the rainfall event, the high precip, which has made its way into the river. And this additional amount of water on top of the base flow is called through flow. And this through flow is coming from the soil and the rock layers and the bedrock and it's coming from initially the rain the meteoric source but infiltrating into the surface of the 
watershed, the catchment area, the drainage basin, again, based on the permeability, the porosity, and the surface type and the geology, and it's flowing through and adding in to the river system, the river channel, in addition to the base flow. So naturally, the river height is going to increase and there'll be more water in the river flowing down because of this additional through flow. The base flow is our consistent amount of water flowing in from groundwater sources. The through flow is the additional water from subsurface sources and soil and rock flowing into the river channel. And then we have the final overland flow, the surface runoff, the storm runoff, the additional water from the storm or rainfall event, which is additional to both the base flow and through flow and causing the river to peak at a higher discharge, at a higher river height, because of the addition of the extra precip. And this is called the rising limb. So anything above the base flow, which includes the through flow, overland flow, which also storm runoff or surface runoff, is called the rising limb. It's the river rising up, getting larger and larger and larger because of the extra water that's flowing down, the additional discharge that's flowing down through that channel because of the additional rain and the different ways in which the water can get into the river and that will also dictate how fast the water gets into the river based on where it comes from through groundwater it will be a bit quicker because it's the natural infiltration and source overland flow and storm runoff will come in a bit later on as shown in the time aspect of the horizontal axis where overland flow is the last to come in to cause that peak flow in that river. In any watershed or catchment area or drainage basin, when it rains, meteoric sources, the water will take a given time to flow through different avenues, different sources into the river. And that time is called lag time. Now this is calculated looking at the effect of the river and how long it takes to increase in height and discharge from when it started to rain. This is based on where it rains versus where the measurements are being taken for the river. And this can indicate also any changes in the topography or the landscape and indicate the chance of flooding for that river if the lag time is short or even give information about how to prepare people live around the river for any storm events that could cause flooding and how long it takes for the water to get into the river to flood. The rainfall event, the high precip, the storm will only last for a given time and therefore the amount of water being added into the river in addition will only be there for a certain amount of time and this will correspond to the hydrograph showing a, a rising limb, the addition of water through the different methods and sources, base flow, through flow, overland flow, and storm runoff. The rising limb to the peak, the highest point of the maximum amount of water in the river at that time, caused by the storm or rainfall event. And then it will go into a recessional limb or a falling limb where the water, the flow of water will decrease and reduce. River height will decrease due to the discharge slowing down and you'll have the river returning back to its normal height during its base flow. So this storm event will only last for a certain amount of time. It is not consistent, it is short-lived. However, the hydrograph is going to indicate the flow of water and the impact of this storm event on the river channel. And that will give implications to the watershed, the tributaries, the saturation level of the soil in terms of overland flow, the porosity of the soil and the bedrock, and also the amount of rain that fell during that storm event. Each river will have a certain amount of water it can hold before it floods. So in the channel itself, there will be a certain volume of water or discharge it can hold before it overflows its banks and goes into the floodplain. Now, the flooding stage or the point at which this happens can be shown and calculated on a hydrograph and it indicates how much rain a watershed or catchment area can hold the capacity for each river before it's going to flood. 
So this flooding stage or this limit, this threshold, can be indicated on every hydrograph to show how much water a river can handle before it floods and overflows its banks. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.